is the last in the series of the Boxford lathe build. We fit the headstock back onto the lathe bed, fit the lead screw, the saddle and the tailstock. We carry out some work on the lead screw gearbox and we also replace the bearings on one of the drive shafts. So let's go over to the workshop and see how we do it. Cleaning these gears because I've got swarf all in them. I say the whole machine just never got cleaned. These little, these are runways for the oil to go, make sure they're all free. Keyway that looks in good condition, another keyway there. Let's get the um, toothbrush, let's clean that out. Oh, that's, that's better. Now this one goes. This goes together. Looks like one that goes there, another one goes there. No keyway on that one, so keyway on that one, so I've got that right way around, so this is just an idler. before locking as if the shaft's bent. What's that? Is it you? So this goes on here and locks on there that controls the, th the, uh, the thrust on that. Worried about these tight spots here. Let's investigate that. Secondary shaft bearing replacement. The old bearings have been removed off the shaft. Shaft's cleaned up. Moved out the carriers. I can see some minor damage here. At one point, this pulley must have uh, must have drifted over and rubbed onto onto this. But um, I say minor damage, nothing to really worry about. New bearings. 
come for the same as the original ones with steel seals, double sided seals. You can get a rubber eye seal but decided well the other ones lasted long enough since 72 so should be good enough for another 40 years. What I'm going to do first is press the bearings into the carrier. They're not, they're not sided so it doesn't matter which way they go in. First thing to do is obtain a, a socket that fits snugly into the uh, carrier. It happens to be 11 16th Whitworth. It fits ne neatly onto the uh, outer, outer uh, race of the bearing, so we're not going to do any damage. We don't want to push the bearing in by the inner race because it could cause indentations on the race itself. Um, got soft jaws on the one side of the vise, which I'll put the uh, carrier up against. Central to the vice to equal the force that's going to go on the bearing. Forward enough, that's inserted correctly. Same with the second one. That one's done. Now I'm looking for a socket that fits over the shaft and inside the carrier in the circumference. So I need to put, apply pressure to the inner race to push it onto the shaft. I've slackened the uh, grub screw off on the pulley so I can push it inside the larger pulley give me more of the shaft to grip in the vise. Try the other shaft, the, the other soft jaws. These tend to have a habit of moving. I'd like to press them in but uh, the vise just doesn't go wide enough. I'll use a little bit of lubrication, just a bit of grease. Um, on the bearing. The other end of the shaft. Right. Obviously we don't want the bearing to drift outwards so the uh, the end stop for the bearing in the outer right in the outer carrier faces outwards, so that'll go on that way. And this one will go on this way, and that'll control the shaft. The lathe bed was fitted back onto the base cabinet and a layer of oil applied where the headstock fits. The next part to fit is the lead screw and gearbox.
three cap heads hold the gearbox to the bed and two cap heads on the other end support the end of the lead screw. Check once fitted that the lead screw can turn freely. You can see there are two cutouts in the bed where the headstock fits. The cutouts are for clearance for the drive belt. We're now ready to fit the headstock into its correct position. Before the headstock was removed, we measured the end of the headstock to the end of the bed. The headstock is held in position with two cast brackets underneath and two bolts that go into the headstock, clamping the headstock down to the bed. Once the clamps have been fitted, the headstock is moved to its correct position from the end of the bed to the end of the headstock. This was measured previously and a note of the size made on the yellow paper. We're now setting the headstock to the original position. It's important that you check this before you remove the headstock so that you can replace the headstock to the correct position and all the gears should line up. Once in position, the clamps can be finely tightened to locate the headstock and hold it permanently. Next we fit the compound slide and cross slide to the bed. And we add the tail stock to the end of the bed. We slacken and remove the lead screw support block on the end of the bed so that we can slide the apron on over the lead screw. The lead screw must pass through the worm gear on the apron and the key weight on the worm gear aligns with the slot on the lead screw. Once in position Replace the lead screw support block on the end of the bed to prevent any damage to the lead screw due to the weight of the apron. The apron can now be aligned with the two holes in the top and two cap heads fit the saddle to the apron.
After replacing the electric motor and the drive shafts and belts, then replacing the cover on the end of the gearbox, the lathe was finished. So let's compare the picture of the lathe before we started to the lathe as it is now. Well that's the finished lathe, all reconditioned, I hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.